Tap Tap Send, envoyez plus, dépensez moins. Man, on a ta one reo, tunga soa tomni, podcast na imitsama, zaimuzani, asna, sitin, ina vuvona reo. Ti podcast ti zany tao isakan tapa bula na nam jiram Facebook ya noa dem voka episode rai tapa tapa ka voka inju isakir nanjo. Norma pe zany zany matetet ki amit zany am Facebook mis fona miu vo vo fona zany le vayin miara kamnaya fa zavata na kraiku zany te Tuanani tap tap send iti podcast tetia setia izerungu zani de orang Malaysia kel sahun izitin. Tiada Malaysia pemit, fakta Malaysia kel sana tiada Malaysia pemit dan tap tap send i tap tap send zani fan de fasa na fula vani vilani makanya mata kasikara mai mai pona. Cis Fred on voit wa tena cis Fred on voit si orang le orange moneren zani. Te ampeso ni kod milai be, majeskul am tamada daol milai be, arate azo diro nao zani, am ni fandefas na voluan. Izan vayi tsik androan e ratine? Vayi tsik androan ya, izi panau film, izi panau Instagram, izi panau... panau... zavada ma fnaar sa be. Ah, fnaar sa be, zan? Ma fnaar sa be, tsi za fa? Jeffrey Gaspar, izy moa zany nianara mety ahy anareo fa raha anareo Igers Madagascar amin'ny Instagram lirin tompony. Donc, <hesitation> asa mety ahy tsy hoe <hesitation> raha kota avy na mbola tsy monday le izy ty ao. <hesitation> De zay koa zany androany <hesitation> manao zavatra miavaka kely aloha zay te anao podcast amin'ny teny anglis. Kara wotra ny nao liana amin'ny mianatra teny anglis na efa may be amin'ny teny anglis a de mazoto mijery sy miaina an'ny podcast androany. Ndaory. So yeah, why don't you just start by like telling us, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit more about yourself, whatever you're comfortable with and uh, You know, maybe about like your most recent projects, or maybe a project that you're most proud of, for example, and we can kind of start start like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm uh, Jeffrey Gaspard. Uh, I'm from Zegosores, uh, northern tip of Madagascar. Um, I'm 27 at the moment, and uh, uh, I can say I'm very proud to say that I'm a filmmaker and a photographer. It's a big chance to do this uh, to this job because a uh, few people are able to do it. Um, especially in Madagascar. Um, so most recent project uh, would be with uh, Business Insider uh, last year. Uh, yes, yeah, last year with uh, uh, about it was about vanilla, the business of vanilla. So it was it was supposed to be a, a four days trip <laughs> and then it became 11 days trip. So of out of that, every, every, I mean, you discover every uh, anything every day, every single day. There's no you have to make the story. Obviously, you have to find um, the people. You have to understand the the business, of course. But also, um, I'm like a link because I've, I've been brought up uh, Malagasy and uh, French uh, uh, by, by by French and Malagasy parents, and um, so I have this education. So I'm like a middleman uh, about information. I'm trying to, I, I know what's, what the, the, the media is looking for because uh, they have a certain way to communicate. Uh, it's a Western way to communicate. So Madagascar is uh, very different. Obviously, they know what they know, but I have to translate that into something that the, the West could understand, especially the whole world could, uh, could understand and uh, the easiest way possible. So... Uh, they told me on the phone, yeah, it's only four days trip. And I said to the Americans, I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, let's see. <laughs> and then yeah. the more and more I, I, I got information about the, um, the, the trip and the, the business of vanilla, I was like, no, impossible. And also most, most, most of the time, the me international media think that they check Google, Google Maps, and they said, oh, it's easy, it's close. Whereas yeah. Madagascar, uh, it's very freestyle. Uh, bo both of you know, the, the state of uh, of uh, highways and <laughs> and uh, the roads in Madagascar. Yeah. So 
especially even the flights, it's uh, quite expensive. So we have to take that into account when uh, when traveling, and uh, it takes time. It takes time. So uh, I have to make understand the media that it's much more time than uh, what they thought. So if you watch the the the, the report, you see one shot. It's uh, let's say Weimar. The other shot it's Ambanza. And that's like yeah. a few seconds. And then I had right. to travel all the way back to the uh, East Coast. So it was uh, quite uh, sporty. <laughs> yeah. 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 Used to the American freeways. They're like, it'd probably be like a two and a half hour <laughs> drive. We can do those both in one day. You're like, well, the road's actually broken. So it'll take 48 <laughs> hours to get there. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. And, and you said, so you're 27 years old, filmmaker how uh, what got you into filmmaking how long have you been doing it uh i have an interesting story about that actually um why filmmaking uh, so i used to windsurf well i still do but not as uh, often as before and um in diego we have a lot of wind called the varachaza in the local language and uh, it's a very southeast a very strong southeast uh, wind uh, sometimes equal to cyclones it's very strong and for us, uh, kite surfers, wind surfers, it's uh, heaven. <laughs> most people, most tourists don't like it, but we love it. So right. I use I used to windsurf since uh, the age of eleven, and um, the more I grew up, so I learned tricks and all. So when you learn tricks, obviously, like any sports, uh, extreme sports, you watch videos online, and uh, you see, okay, the guy is doing this, the guy is doing that. Okay, it's flying like crazy, and at that time, it was the, the start of uh, Facebook, so uh we got friends and all online and all and obviously i'm a, I'm a shy guy yeah, in, in general and um uh trying to impress the girls at school so it was through facebook so <laughs> we, we're trying to get pictures uh, of of our uh, trip um, of our uh, loops and all uh in the in the waves because the waves are very far from the coast so uh trying to learn watching videos going to the beach uh, going to the waves jumps and all and then get, get, getting a friend to taking pictures of us. And then the more and more I watched the videos, I was like, okay, it seems like I, I, I like the way they make those videos. So the more and more I watched the videos, I was like, I want to do like them. So uh, I became the photographer and, uh, and uh, suddenly well, later on, I went to South Africa and this was like, a, I call this my Eminem moment because it was the <laughs> winter in, in, in Cape Town. And uh, I was going back home in the in the hood <laughs> of Cape Town, and um, there was a billboard. So I was in the back of the bus, so my head like tired, uh, my head against the window. And then I just look up and I saw the sign: uh, "Learn filmmaking now." So it was like a <laughs> a, a click in my head, and uh, uh, somehow I, I knew it was that. So I had to convince my parents; uh, they agreed. And uh, later on, I went to to Mumbai, India, to, to learn uh, filmmaking. So I did, uh, I have a Bachelor of uh, Filmmaking in uh, with specialization in cinematography. So that's how I got into filmmaking. But somehow deep down, the more the more I know myself, I knew uh, from, a long, from a long time ago that I wanted to do filmmaking. So well, it came. That's anyway. awesome. It's like a movie story, essentially. You're like growing up, doing an extreme sport. Loving it, you know, impressing the girls at school. And then <laughs> right. you have this big billboard <laughs> moment where it's like, Dah! filmmaking. So I know filmmaking is such a broad uh, topic. You know, there's there's the actual filming, there's editing, there's the production side, you know, the communication side with, like you were saying, the, the clients, um, all of the kind of logistics in terms of transportation and all those things. You know, most of those things people don't realize or at least don't see in terms of that uh, end of filming. So what do you kind of cover all of those bases or when you say filmmaker, what kind of category of filmmaking are you most interested in? And, and uh, do you end up kind of just doing all of it or, or how does it, how do you work that out when you have those uh, big projects? Uh, I can say that I'm a freelance filmmaker. So I get a, a media contacting me about any subject like the one I told you. And um, from my side, I mean, at my level, I do everything. So the script, uh, the, the the shooting, obviously, the um, uh, the direction, obviously, and the editing. So 
uh, it's very, well, I do everything, even the logistics, of course, I organize everything. I like to play my, myself because I know Madagascar, I know the people, but well, especially the North, I don't know much of this, about the South, even though I already had a, a mission in the South. Um, but at my level, um, I do everything uh, because I have this, um, this vision. I know what I want in my, in my films. Uh, mostly it's documentary films. Huh? Uh, but since my, uh, my uh, studies in India, uh, when I came back, obviously I wanted to do uh, uh, fiction films. So it's, uh, it will be my, my goals in the future. But for now, I'm learning. I'm learning about Madagascar, about the people, the, the state of mind of uh, Malagasy people, even in, uh, around the world. I'm watching films. I'm learning a lot so that one day I make, I'll make um, fiction films. Uh, but for now, and obviously, I will stick to direction because at the end of the day, you cannot do everything, obviously. Um, and that you need a team, etc., etc. So actually, I've made films already or even short films, uh, just being the director and the editor. Uh, I like <laughs> delegating, so uh, I cannot do everything, obviously. But I, right. I, I, I want, uh, obviously, um, feedback from uh, on, on set. And um, and uh, I like teamwork also, but uh, at the end of the day, I want to stick to direction, and obviously editing. For anybody that hasn't seen uh, Tavela, what's like a short synopsis of of what that film is about? Uh, that film is about uh, Diego. First of all, it's my like <clears throat> my love letter to Diego uh, because I really, really, really love my city, and I was at that time I was very sad of what it was becoming. Uh, since 2009, it was declining, and now we have. Uh, I won't go into politics, but now we have a good mayor, so it's everything is back in normal, um, back to normal. Sorry, and uh, it was it was about Murengi, the traditional fight. Um, it's not from the north; it's from Murundava, the the west coast, and then uh, brought up to to Diego with uh, with the migrations and all, and then. The people of Diego kept it. I mean, the north, because it's all Diana region. Um, and then till date, it's uh, it's a crazy fight. Uh, like it looks like boxing, Muay Thai, but uh, it's Malagasy. <laughs> I cannot I cannot really explain it. You have to to see it online. Uh, you can find videos online. And the movie is about that. How the youth of Diego is becoming. I mean, even the the, the title has a meaning. Obviously, Tavela means three things uh to be uh, knocked out uh in in Murengi, uh to be stuck and uh, what is left so there's a big meaning behind this because i'm talking about culture i'm talking about the fighting uh, tradition and i'm talking about um hope if we have some and uh, and traditions of course so it's a mix of all of that it's a slow movie uh, i'm uh, i like slow movies uh it's like contemplation. You you have to understand. You have to. There's a message in every frame. There's a message. Uh, obviously, stick together. It's a big message. So many people uh, loved it. Many did not as well. But people of Diego, people of the north, really lo loved it because it was about themselves. They never saw themselves like this. So right. on the big screen. Uh, yeah. So that was about it. And then Eternum. It's very different. Uh, one has to know, I, I made those movies like six months apart. Huh? Um, the first one was Tavela, the second Eternum. Eternum is 10 minutes film, Tavela is 66 minutes. And um, Eternum was just a, an assignment from uh, from uh, the university in India. And then um, I made it big with my my, with my friends. Um, we made, I mean, I wrote a story, I had this song, especially from windsurfing. At that time in 2014, I was like, oh, this could be a great, uh, uh, 2014 i was like oh this could be great uh, uh music video i mean um uh, winter video and then uh, somehow it stuck in the back of my mind and then later on at this point of the of my life and it came back and i, I had this assignment make a music video with any music of your choice so i was like okay i talked to my friends i have this music i didn't write the story yet and then i went home and uh, one hour within an hour i had a story so it was about uh, World War II, <clears throat> one and two, sorry, about the involvement of um, 
uh, Indian soldiers, uh, volunteers mostly, uh, that Britain uh, brought to Europe to fight uh, the Germans, the Japanese, uh, and the Italians. Um, so yes, so it was it was about that and how it was tearing apart homes and families in India. So uh, it's very intense, very philosophic. There is a I've, I've, uh, I'm a, I, like, I like war movies. I like boxing movies too. Um, so I got inspiration for Eternum from from 14 films, war films, um, and then paintings, Malagasy tradition, uh, Malagasy culture, uh, French culture, Italian culture, Mexican culture, and obviously Indian culture. So it's, uh, uh, bon, it's I, can, I, can, <laughs> I can give you a hint here. There is the the, 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 this amazing painting by uh, Leonardo da Vinci, which I love, uh, the creation of Adam uh, in the Chapel 16, when the two <laughs> fingers are out from yeah. God and, uh, and, and Adam are touching. Right. So I try, I try to recreate that. Uh, this is a spoiler for those who haven't seen it. So yes, I try to insert uh, paintings, like even uh, references from other films to, to give homage to pay tribute to, to the works of uh, filmmakers I admire. So, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, it's cool. Those are, those are a lot of things uh, people don't really think about, you know, little shots that include those, you know, a shot of a painting, you know, just imagining seeing a shot of a painting in a film. Most people, I mean, they may recognize the painting, but that's about it. Whereas, you know, there's a lot of artistic or kind of, uh, you know, connecting deep, deep uh, meaning behind that. Very cool. And to go back to Merengue as well, that's yes. something because my wife is from, she she's, uh, seems like, you know, maybe kind of similar to your, uh, you know, Region. coming up, I guess you could say, just because yeah. her, you know, she has a French uh, parent and a Malagas parent, so she has kind of the, the both cultures uh, combined. She did grow up, she was born in, and raised in France, that's a little bit different, but um, her mom is from Sambava, and so Merengue is, is a huge thing in uh, Sambava as well. And so she she would spend summers there when she was little, and that was like her favorite. Every Sunday, go to the beach and watch Merengue when she was a little girl. So like even till now, she likes the combat sports because of that uh, culture um, in, in Madagascar. Like you said, in North Sambava is, you know, North Madagascar as well. And so very cool to kind of, uh, you know, I'm not sure if that was necessarily a love letter, I guess you said, more than, uh, you know, homage yes. to, to North Madagascar, but very, very cool, very definite, uh, prevalent part of the culture for sure. And one thing for me, which was very important, well, there were, there were many things, but this in particular, so you can see mostly uh, when you go online, um, you see most, or even on TV, mostly um, films or like reports of Madag about Madagascar, Malagasy people, cultures of Malagasy people uh, shot by uh, foreigners. So this time I wanted to show uh, what it looks like from the inside, uh, because they, I mean, foreigners wouldn't have access or even those visuals understand the, the philosophy and all of Murenge, even though it's um, the, the tradition is not the same as before. Obviously, it's, uh, we are changing. We are changing mm -hmm. very fast with uh, social media and all. And um, Murenge has changed a lot. Uh, everybody will tell you that. And um, I wanted to show it from the inside, from a local perspective. Yes. Very cool. And mostly, mostly when uh, us, like me, our generation, uh, watch TV, it's the, the foreigner who came here, ask someone, what about this tradition? Okay, I shot it, I shoot it, and then go back home in Europe or uh, anywhere, and then do the, the, edi the editing, and then uh, send it online or on TV. And then we, uh, because it's our generation, we have access to uh, social media and TV. We are learning about our own culture from foreigners' point of view, which is somehow wrong because uh, he may not, he or she may not have understood everything. Uh, right. So it's quite uh, uh, vast. So we have to uh, take responsibility of our own cultures and uh, tell the stories ourselves. I mean, yeah. this is my point. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. One thing I was going to mention about that too is like, I totally agree. There's just too many filters that pass through the vision of, for example, if I were to, you know, observe Moreng for two weeks or a month or whatever, there's so many filters before it reaches my comprehension that are just so different from what a local Malagasy would, would understand. The first thing I think of is language. Like, first of all, 
you know, foreigners from the Western world, as you say, come to film in Madagascar, they're either speaking English or French. And for me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very passionate about languages. So it's like right then and there, there's already, you know, 25% of the entire culture, you know, omitted because they can't speak Malagasy. So that's the, and, and that's only the, the tip of the iceberg. So exactly. definitely very, I, I totally agree. Essentially, that's all. <laughs> totally agree with that point. Very cool. Very cool point. Yeah. And it's a, it's kind of an, <clears throat> that's an interesting thing too. Cause I mean, from like a tourist perspective, you know, somebody's not going to, people aren't going to want to invest time learning a new language to go to a tourist mm -hmm. spot. Right. But yes. I think there is, I mean, for, you know, somebody going to, you know, France or, you know, an American going to France or like a French person visiting Japan or something there, they're, they're not going to bring the expectation of, oh, I'll just speak, you know, my language. They might, you know, try and learn a few words where I think people going to Madagascar, they don't always have or other, you know, kind of more impoverished areas. They don't have that same mindset, but I think that people should. Um, and it's interesting because on one of our uh, last videos, I don't know if you saw this, uh, uh, Hasana, but um, somebody commented a video like, check this out. And it was a it was a white lady speaking like pretty good Malagasy and I don't know it looked like she was in like a Nalakali or somewhere but she was like speaking it pretty good and she was like yeah you know foreigners should learn Malagasy and obviously you know we say that all the time too and I think it's I think it's growing and I think the internet is helping that but yeah it's just such a interesting uh, dynamic yes definitely and uh, the more um, the more I learn I mean I'm making my uh, third feature film at the moment uh, it's uh, like a mo about uh, uh, one year of shooting, even more now, and um, and uh, I'm learning so much about Madagascar. I mean, I like history. I love history, and uh, obviously, bon, by my name, obviously that's not my full name, but uh, uh, well, I'm not hiding any any uh, Malagasy name. It's like <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm being called Jeffrey Gaspar, but. Uh, what I see is that there is a huge, heavy history of migration uh, from outside, and uh, mostly, like example, for example, when I I showcased the uh, Tavela in uh, Cinepax in uh, Antena River, um, the guy the, at the uh, at the counter told me that some some people because my posters uh, the Tavela posters uh, were outside of Cinepax, and he, the 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 counter guy was told, told me that. Okay, so a lady passed, and then she asked, uh, "Is this guy Malagasy? Because you guys are promoting this as a Malagasy movie. Uh, what about his name?" And then he told me that I was like, "Okay, the next time someone tells you this, ask you this, ask them, and this is what I do also, ask them if they know the history of Madagascar, because you cannot say this kind of sentence or uh, this kind of uh, question uh, if you don't know the uh, history of Madagascar. It's very rich, very dense." Uh, we had a huge uh, period of time of uh, slavery, and um, we, it's not so much learned at school, unfortunately, but I think it's uh, it's heavy on Malagasy people nowadays. So the, the things about language, like you said in a previous video last time, uh, uh, Asna, uh, about um, uh, the influence of other uh, languages on Malagasy language, uh, it's very heavy. So... I mean, one has to learn the history of Madagascar. I mean, not entirely, obviously, but be humble <laughs> and uh, know that we are rich of uh, diverse uh, uh, influences and that we should not be uh, somehow uh, xenophobic and or anything like that. Right. Yeah, and it's so interesting. I'm sure there's a lot of kind of uh, similar to the, the, the issue, I guess, if you will, to, to languages. It kind of uh, in terms of race in Madagascar, it's still kind of very uh, out of date in terms of the mindset of the average Malagasy person, you know. And what I mean by that is, if you look like me, there's no way that you can be Malagasy. It's it's impossible. And and on the flip side, if you have a Malagasy, you know, if you look like a Malagasy, even if you've your family has been in France for a hundred years, you're still Malagasy. You're not French. And so, yes. and that's, of course, uh, I'm generalizing there. There are people that, uh, that don't uh, agree with that. But I, I would say from my perspective, the average opinion 
is that. And so it's still very based on kind of how you look, very based on your name. Like you said, you know, you, you don't have a, a Malagasy part to your name, so you can't be Malagasy or you're, you're a little bit uh, lighter of uh, skin color. So, you know, there's no way you can't be Malagasy. So it's just, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely, a, I'm sure something that you, you kind of uh, run into whether in your filmmaking or just in your, your daily life going, doing groceries, you know, people, people uh, see you as, as uh, you know, maybe not a hundred percent Malagasy, you know, and of course you have different origins as well, but, um, yes. but it sounds like uh, you, you spent most of your childhood uh, or at least a lot of it, you know, in Malagasy, in Diego, as you said. Yes, so yes. for me, for me, you're Malagasy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, but the thing is, like, I have French, Malagasy, Indian, and uh, British or English uh, um, uh, origins. Oh, it's like even within that, it's even richer. So I'm a, like a, a son of uh, the Indian Ocean. It's so rich. And um, one thing which is very important for me is that uh my love for madagascar uh despite ha having studied uh, outside south africa and uh, india for uh five years approximately i came back to madagascar so that was very important for me uh even though uh, i had opportunities in india uh, even in france or even next door in Rhenan island i came back to madagascar because i i felt that uh there are so many stories to be told and films to be made and uh, so, I mean, to me, it's a, a big adventure. It's like a life adventure. So people don't realize that, okay, you do studies, you have an opportunity to go out, you don't come back. <laughs> Mostly it's that. Uh, you do anything to, to earn big money outside. You can send to the family sometimes, but uh, you stay outside Madagascar. But for me, it was right. the opposite. Learn and come back, which many of my friends do also. Uh, I have many friends who came back as well. Um, we have hope, <laughs> despite the the state of the country at the moment, but we have hope. <laughs> yes. For sure, man. So so with uh, kind of, I mean, we talked about your filmmaking career, and, and I know like another part of, of what you do is, you know, the big Instagram page, right? Like you found yeah. a lot of success with that. Can you talk about and share kind of some of your experiences with that and the name of the page for, for those who may not follow. Yes. First of all, it's called, uh, and pe many people don't know that, mostly not non-English speakers. It's called Igers Madagascar. Igers stands for Instagrammers. So it's a short term uh, uh, version. So it's, it can be told very easily. And it's an international group of uh, Instagram lovers uh, who would meet an afternoon or some day of the week and shoot together whether on smartphone whether on camera like a professional just it's, it was just about meeting meeting uh, other photographers in town or even tourists uh, who, who love the city so i started that when i was in uh, when i was part of Igers cape town Igers south africa when i was staying there uh, during my studies and then i discovered that okay there's nothing of uh, of, uh, of such sort in Madagascar. So let's la let's launch it. And I created my guess, Madagascar in Cape Town on the 22nd of May 2015. So it's going to be eight years in a month um, and month's time. And um, uh, I mean, that's how uh, I got somehow some fame because I bring even with my filmmaking as well, I bring a vision of Madagascar, which is uh, not negative, first of all, uh, I promote the Mad Madagascar, Malagasy people, any culture, because people would say there is the Malagasy culture. No, there's not one. There are many. Even within one um, ethnic group, I would say there are like even more um, like uh, other uh, cultures. So it's very rich. And um, I take pictures from uh, people online, uh, mostly even for, even from Facebook. So a screenshot. I download the pictures and the videos and then I share them. Um, showing Madagascar in a way that um, that people not would not have seen before. And uh, I'm very proud of that because uh, at this date, we have 53,600 people, uh, followers on Instagram and about 40,000 on um, Facebook. So well, we are mostly active on Instagram because we can reach people through images. And people, when they come for vacation, or even locals, 
when they want to go on vacation, they check the the the, the, the gallery. So it's very uh, it's very good because uh, we, I mean, we are bringing all of Madagascar, even in the like deep down in the bush, uh, people discover pictures that and villages that uh, and amazing landscapes that they would love to to visit. So uh, it's a great way to reach people as well. Yes. That's awesome, man. And is how how has that kind of uh, tied into or affected your career in in filmmaking? I'm I'm assuming that's kind of gotten you you know some good exposure and maybe even uh, you know helped you get in contact with potential clients. How how have those two things kind of tied in? Yes, um, obviously. Well, most of the people in Madagascar uh, they are in Tana. Do it's not it's, Instagram is like a elite. Uh, kind of, I, I don't like this word, but it's kind of elite uh, ap application here. So people who have the the, the financial means to, to travel, um, they are in Tana. So that's how I got known. And through that, they wanted to know who was behind. So I did some um, Zoom calls and all uh, interviews. So that's how I got uh, known. But I tried to promote Madagascar first, Malagasy people, etc. But not myself. Whenever I make a, a film or a short film, I promote it once <laughs> and then uh, I go silent. But because it's not about me, it's about Madagascar. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's a really cool mindset, man. Because a lot of people I feel like would totally, and maybe even myself included, would totally use a platform like that to, to not necessarily take advantage, but just to, you know, you know, really shed light on on projects that i'm doing that i'm really proud of so it's very cool that you've kept that uh you know very moderate in terms of uh you know focusing all almost 100 percent on madagascar and uh and not just using it to you know to bring more more uh shed more light on on what you do personally it's very cool self-promote yeah. yeah cool well um jeff for people who want to you know kind of find your works find your stuff where where can they go to to find all that mostly for videos and films uh it will be on youtube uh very accessible even even from Tav for tavela uh it's a, it's a feature film one should not like post it online like this but because i want people to learn about their own culture uh, or even one of uh, one of malagasy cultures uh, i wanted to uh, leave it accessible for anybody around the world. So it's online, uh, Tavela, uh, even other films, obviously, on my YouTube channel. Otherwise, yeah, you can contact me on Facebook, um, Instagram, obviously, Twitter and, uh, and LinkedIn. I'm not so much <laughs> there, but mostly Facebook and Instagram. Cool. Great. Yeah, that's dope. I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I've watched a few minutes of, uh, Tavela. I need to watch the whole uh, the whole thing. Do you have your Indian film as well uh, on there? I know you said it's multicultural, yes. but the one you the one you made in India. Yes, for sure. It's on. Okay, list. cool. Both of them won um, uh, awards. Uh, one Tavela in France and Eternum in the in Montana in the U.S. Oh, um, really? Audience, wow. audience Montana. Award. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, that's very really cool. cool. Okay, man. Yeah. Um, just to kind of finish up our uh, podcast, I'm not sure if you've seen the, any of the other episodes, but we have kind of um, three questions that we ask each of our uh, guests. They're, they're, two of them are very simple. And so you can answer very quickly. The last one's a little bit, you know, requires a little bit more thought, but uh, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll ring those off and we'll be good. So the first question for you is, do you like rice first of all that's the first question because rice is Whoa. so <laughs> common in Madagascar. and if so which i'm assuming is probably yes if so what is your favorite loka what is your favorite uh you know topping to have on rice okay so yes and the best in madagascar is in diego or at least the northern region you should know that um it's called <laughs> madame Rose. um this, that's the name of the rice and um okay uh the topping it's uh, called kuji Kuj. I don't know I've if you've heard, heard of that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, heard that. delicious. Kuj with uh, Kituza or Mosquita for the north. Yeah. Uh, it's insanely good. <laughs> so what is Kuj? Kuj is like, um, you know, uh, well, I don't know the name in French. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's like it's beige and uh, it's like a small eye, black eye on it. It's like a um, beans. 
bean, okay. like a type of bean. Okay. Yes, one a type of bean. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Simple, but sounds good. You should try that when you come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will, man. For sure. Right. Yes. The second question. Nice. Um, next question. So, do you like do you like Malagasy music? And if so, who's one of your favorite like Malagasy artists? Oh, um, right now I have two. I mean, right now I have to obviously uh, the one and only the, the Miz. Uh, I really, really love it because she she brought something new, a vision, like a new vision, a Madagascar that I, I, I can see it. Uh, I would love to make music videos for her. Um, and she knows that already. And um, <laughs> uh, what's his name? Ngiatax, uh, like from, from the east, northeast, I think. I really like the, the uh, name. The, I can the name kind of uh, reminds me. Like I've, I feel like I've heard the name. I'm not familiar with the music yes. though. I can send you the link. It's uh, I really like it. It's a uh, uh, Basta Lion is there, and uh, um, uh, Paul Eduardo. He's from Tamatav but lives in Diego. He's he made the, the end of uh, the end of the, the generic music of uh, Tavela. Um, oh, cool. Cool. It's a beautiful one, and I love it also. Sweet, man. Yeah, you should definitely share some of those links so we can check them out. <laughs> cool. Give us some more culture, please. <laughs> um, okay, last question for you. Is a little bit requires maybe a little bit more thought, but you can kind of uh, whatever whatever comes to your mind. What is one yes. thing that comes from either Malagasy culture or, or the life in, in Madagascar that other countries or other cultures could learn something from? What is something... What is one thing like, for example, a cultural practice could be a, uh, you know, like a like an actual tradition, or it could just be like a very simple mindset. So anything that comes from the culture in Madagascar that other countries or other cultures could would do well to to uh, integrate into their culture. So something they could learn from the Malagasy culture. One thing I would uh, I think well, it's a good question for a filmmaker actually because uh, I learned so much and this this is. A good question. Uh, I think it would be uh, the, what the state, the state of the world is going through right now, going back to nature, because Malagasy people, whichever region, they are very uh, linked to nature, and um, with that is the tradition. Uh, despite the the years of um, of history that uh, uh, that we lived. We stuck with our traditions, despite the rival of, tradi uh, of religions. Uh, people sometimes do both Malagasy culture and uh, Christian or Islam, etc. And uh, I'm very proud of that because it's not against each other. It's uh, complementary. So uh, I think uh, many people in the world should learn from that, despite well, they are creating wars just based on religion. Whereas uh, we can just learn from each other, from each uh, religion and all. So I think that would be very interesting. Cool. Great answer. And oh, obviously, one, one last thing, because all of that is oral tradition. No, nothing written. So to, right. to keep that alive, it's very difficult. And we're an island. <laughs> so right. we still have the, have the tradition. Too. So it's a, that's amazing. And I think the other countries should uh, should learn. <laughs> so essentially, you have to come live there to learn the things because it's not written anywhere. So, so you can't read it online. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which makes it even more valuable, almost in a way, because it's less accessible. Exactly. Major pleasure for us to be able to do this podcast with you and learn more about uh, Madagascar and your filmmaking and all your other projects, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for coming on. It's, it's we're super excited to see you know more of what you do and and more of what you create. So we'll, we'll keep our eyes peeled. Yes, basically beginning next year, you'll have my uh, hopefully <laughs> um, asking ancestors and all <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that uh, my third film uh, will come out and it's gonna be a big one uh, because it's it won't be only Madagascar. It will be international. So it's a, cool. a very special one. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot say much. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't spoil everything for us. We're st already stuck um, for that on the little information yes. you can give. Should be awesome. Yeah. 
Tap Tap Send, envoyez plus, dépensez moins.